Hi, uh, I'm Shira Rashid. I work at the Thomson Reuters Foundation at our global pro bono program called Trust Law, and we support NGOs and social enterprises around the world by facilitating pro bono legal assistance from law firms and um, corporate councils who provide their legal expertise free of charge through our program. And the reason why we provide it to, for free for the NGOs and social enterprises is because we feel that there's a huge um, um, time and money that organizations are spending on their legal issues. And if we've got this access to a huge legal network who might be able to provide it for free, then we would want that um, connection to be made to the social enterprise and NGOs in our network. We support Wednesday Philanthropy Organizations or WPOs in two separate ways. One is by partnering up with them to provide access to our program, Trust Law, to the, to the NGOs, the social entrepreneurs, meaning investees or grantees that they support. And the other way is by providing free legal assistance or facilitating free legal assistance to their own organizational legal needs. So one of the things is if you are a venture philanthropy organization trying to set up an impact investment fund, you might come to us asking to help um, get, find advice, facilitate advice on what is the most appropriate form of legal structure to register your fund as or to establish your fund as. And especially if you're looking to attract philanthropic capital and investment capital, what is the most appropriate form of legal structure for that? Or if you're thinking about operating internationally, then we can also help find the best structure for that. The main challenges that WPOs really face are finding the most appropriate form of legal structure for their funds and also in when they're investing in small businesses or social enterprises in countries where the rule of law might not be very strong. So if they're thinking especially of getting a, um, returns on their investment, investing in small businesses in countries where the contracts cannot be really enforced strongly or where corruption is a huge challenge, so that becomes a legal challenge that they need to circumvent. So they come to us asking for specialist legal advice from local law firms who might be able to advise them on how to navigate the laws in the countries that they're looking to invest in. In terms of the SPOs, a lot of the times the key challenges which social purpose organizations really face are how to balance, the, how to find the right balance between the different kinds of investments that they're attracting, especially philanthropic versus investment capital. How do they retain control of their business, especially if there's an equity investment involved? And in addition to that, uh, quite often there's also corporate governance advice that they're looking for and structuring advice, which is the main challenges, legal challenges that organizations face. One way that we really measure the value of the legal support that we provide through our program is by conducting an annual survey where we ask the lawyers in our network who provide free legal assistance to give us um, a, um, a no the number of hours of pro bono legal support that they've provided throughout. Um, the year and we calculate based on that a value which has come to over 70 million dollars worth of pro bono legal assistance that we provided to our network of NGOs and social enterprises around the world over the past five years. And also another way that we try to collect feedback from our membership to see how, how do they really value the legal assistance and also access to our program to understand whether going through us has enabled them to find the right form of legal expertise and also whether it has actually helped them save any kind of make, make any kind of financial savings and, and improve their understanding of their legal needs as an organization. We are the corporate foundation of Thomson Reuters and we're not a grant giving foundation, we are an independent charity that provides services and runs programs that leverages on the business expertise of Thomson Reuters. And Trust Law is one of, the pro one of those programs and we've leveraged on the Thomson business expertise, the legal expertise and the legal connections that they have to create a program which is Trust Law um, today. Aside from the fact that every, every single organization really values the legal advice that they're receiving from the lawyers, I think the one thing that they value the most is the removal of the administrative, administrative burden um, of finding the right form of legal support that they're looking for or the legal expertise that they're looking for. And that's the value that we provide as a program. The second most valued um, aspect of the program is the fact that they get to access pro bono legal support for corporate um, structuring advice or governance advice, which can often be quite expensive for them to get from lawyers if they were to pay for those services. 
I think the re this research on non-financial support is quite key because the fact that non-financial support people might think is not very sexy, but there's a huge amount of that effort that goes from venture philanthropy organizations and other providers to the social enterprises and NGOs. And if once people start putting a value to it, it can be quite massive. So the fact that this report is going to help people understand how do you really value the non-financial support that you're receiving, it can change how people receive the support and how they're going to use this support to achieve the social impact that they're trying to achieve on the ground in the communities that they're operating in.